Gavin here, Death Toll Racing, and it's exciting today. <laughs> my wife's back there dancing around while I, you know, I'm doing this, just trying to keep my eyes going on the camera because I keep looking away. Uh, so, so we're going to actually start doing some fab work on this car today. It's pretty exciting. Uh, we're we're going to start doing the uh, the cross member build that also houses the, the the front and rear lower control arms. Uh, and today we have a really simple checklist again. Uh, but but the uh, fab work is is a little more complicated today than what we were doing yet uh, last week. Uh, we're going to build a cross member. We're going to level the engine and uh, have a comedic wife here, so uh, the transmission or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to mock up front drive line, so that double cardian joint, like I was explaining uh, last week, it it doesn't really react the way you think it's going to and. Uh, we're going to lay out the front and the rear of the cross member so that the uh, joints are right in line with the uh, U-joints, which I have a little bit more on that one. Uh, I ended up ordering a slip yoke eliminator kit for this NP208, and the reason I ended up just doing that and spending money on that now is because it's going to uh, allow us, it's going to put the joints right where it'll be with like a 6L90 or even a T56 and an Atlas are, are going to be in, in close enough proximity of, of that to where we can actually uh, upgrade to those transmissions later without having to redo any of the lower suspension. So I went ahead and I ordered that from uh, Tom Woods Drive Lines, uh, and uh, you're welcome, Tom Woods. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so we're going to use that, uh, and, and we're going to do that later. So he gave me all the dimensions on, on uh, Troy there, gave me all the dimensions on where that's going to be so that we know right where the, right where the center, center of that double cardian joint uh, now it's going to be double cardi in front and rear. Uh, we're we're going to know right where those are so that we can we can make everything exact for that. Uh, so anyway, so we're going to we're going to lay out the front and the rear where where that needs to be. I got a laser level and stuff on there so it draws draws a nice line. Uh, we're going to box in the frame, reinforce the frame so that we can bolt that cross member in. It has a lot more load on it now than the factory one did, so we have to kind of reinforce the frame in that in that area. Uh, and so we're going to do that today. That's that's simple, but it, you know it needs to be done. Uh, then we're going to start designing the uh, the uh, cross member with all the numbers and stuff that we just we just uh, were talking about, and uh, and that should be it. Uh, this this uh, between last week and, and this week, I did play with some NP 208s trying to eliminate the slip yoke on my own. I went to, I drug a friend down to the wrecking yard and we bought a uh, NP 208 out of a Ford with as a bolt on yoke. Uh, they're on the wrong, they drop on the wrong side, so that doesn't work, but I figured we could take the guts out of it, put it in the Chevy transfer case, and uh, maybe that would, that would work, and, and it does, except for the tail housing extension doesn't work. Uh, it ha the oiling for the rear bearing is in the wrong place, so an adapter and stuff would need to be made, but then it puts the, puts the housing too far back, so it really just doesn't work. That's why I ordered the one from, uh, from Tom Woods. Um, yeah, and so that, so we'll get going. We also grabbed a uh, steering box out of a '90s XJ, and uh, so we're going to build that on a later later episode, and we'll port it, we'll rebuild it, and port it ourselves for the uh, cylinder. And uh, I'll show you guys how to make flat face fitting uh, drill bits, to, so you can install flat face fittings in those uh, on your own without having to take to a machine shop. Uh, it won't be machine shop quality, but it's going to be good enough for it, so it won't leak, and uh, and uh, it it should be fine. So uh, anyway, let's get going. Here's the truck that we got the transfer case out of. Uh, really pretty truck. Don't know why it was in the junkyard. Uh, here's Shane pushing the wheelbarrow. Uh, he did make me carry my own lounge chair and beer cooler, though. I thought that was kind of rude of him. Uh, and here's Shane quitting. Uh, don't worry, I, I talked him into coming back, and he took the steering box out of the Jeep for me. Uh, it looked pretty easy. I don't know. He wasn't sweating too much, so I think it was okay. Here's a, a, another Chevy transfer case that I had, and I put that shaft out of that uh, transfer case that Shane took out of that truck, uh, and and it, it it all it all goes in there. You have to change everything, the shift slide and all that stuff, because it's a different style of a synchro. They have a more of a dog style, and the Chevys have more of a synchro style. Uh, but anyway, the uh, it, it all goes in there, and it, and it would work physically, the uh, shaft and everything. But the uh, problem is that rear cover, and it just there's just really no good way of making that work uh, without just completely making a new cover. Uh, the speedometer's pointing down, the vent tube's pointing down, the oil port doesn't line up. 
uh, it really, really, there's nothing. You can't do anything with that cover. You're going to have to start over with a different cover or modify maybe a Chevy cover, which is basically what Tom Woods is doing. He is modifying a uh, existing Chevy cover. He's turning it down. We'll look at that when it comes in. It should be here before next episode. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. But anyway, uh, can it be done? Absolutely. You know, if, if you have access to machine uh, tools, a lathe and a milling machine probably is all you'd need and a, and a chunk of billet. Uh, but, uh, is it worth it? I, I, I would say probably not. Uh, I would, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother uh, doing it this way and not, not when you have other options, uh, to do, to do it uh, with Tom Woods, Woods's kit or, uh, or just getting a different transfer case and altogether. I don't think it's worth uh, spending the time or money on it. So anyway, let's move on to, uh, looking at this transfer case or this cross member like we were supposed to be doing. All right, here we have the flat bars. I'm going to do all four at the same time, the two that weld to the frame and the two that weld to the uh, cross member that bolt to it. Uh, I'm just going to drill them all with 5 16 uh, drill bit. Uh, that's the uh, drill size for a 3 8 tap. Uh, and I just kind of laid it out. To make sure you get these things real square if you're going to do something like that. you got to use a square. I don't try to eyeball it. It definitely isn't going to work out if you try to eyeball it. Uh, it, it, it looks like you get them square, but they, they won't be. Uh, anyway, so I just laid it out. Uh, the white lines are where the tubes are going to be. I laid it out, and I'm going to drill them all five sixteenths, and then we'll, we'll uh, that way we can oversize the ones that need to be oversized and tap the ones that need to be tapped after we get them drilled. Uh, once we drill through the frame and stuff later. All right, I got the four inch flat bar that's going to weld to the bottom of the frame, and then I got the three inch flat bar that's going to weld to the cross member and bolt to it. So I, I need to offset it three eighths of an inch to make up a gap so that the two corners of the flat bars on the cross member line up. So I'm just doing that with a tri square and uh, easy enough. And I'll just line it up, offset it three eighths of an inch, and I'll tack them together and lay it out. I'm doing these in just pairs, so I'm going to mark them A and B. Uh, you know, one one for one side, one for the other, just so, so just so I don't get them mixed up. Uh, and and then I'll drill them. 5 sixteenths, same routine as we did on the on the uh, two inch flat bars and we'll we'll uh, oversize the holes that need to be oversized and we'll tap the holes that need to be tapped once they're all welded in and, and put on okay here's how I I put the plate on and I got it in the right way so that the bolt holes are on the right side uh, and then I just took a straight edge and, and I ran it from this one to the other one and and it wouldn't matter if they were crooked, but uh, just cosmetically, so if you're looking under the car, it, the two line up uh, with each other. There is, I used little wedges and, and this jack to, to twist it, and I just tacked it on the, it sat right here on the highest, that was the highest, so I just tacked it right there on the center with it lined up on the edge and lined up with a line in the back. And then I, uh, and then I, did, I just twisted it around until it was straight with the other side. Uh, we are going to have to take, uh, here, let me move this guy, uh, we are going to have to take, come back with that uh, mag drill that we were using earlier, and I'm going to have to cut, uh, use a hole saw and cut this out, because there's a body mount there, uh, which is fine, uh, that, that'll be easy to do, we'll lay that out and th that, that'll work perfectly sitting on that flat bar, so we'll just go ahead and continue on with leaving that hole kind of covered up we just won't weld it shut all right i got the four inch flat bar welded on or tacked on uh, i stitch welded on the inside and and i'm going to leave it that way I, I just didn't see any reason to fully weld it on there it's not uh it's not really necessary the two inch flat bar goes on like that uh i the, i have to run it down flush with the bottom with the uh, four inch flat bar so we're going to have to put a big weld prep on that bar, and I'll do that before I stick it on there. And then we'll weld, weld around it uh, all the way and seal it up and grind it flat on the bottom. Uh, and we ran out of real estate in the back, so the frame kind of tapered away faster than the, uh, we needed it to, but that's where it ended up. So we're going to have to put a little flat bar in there uh, and weld around it, and that'll be a little challenging with the, uh, with the floor the way it is, but th that's okay. We should be able to get that. Uh, and then I'll probably smooth out all the welds uh, that I put around the 4-inch flat bar later, and I'll go over them with a TIG torch uh, just so that they look uh, really nice when people are looking under the car. That's the first weld they're going to see, the ones on the outside of that flat bar. Uh, well, so we'll do that, and then it'll make it look real pretty. All right, we're finally working with some square tube now, and uh, I'm going to show off some of my portaband skills. Uh, so we decided on 20, 20 degrees coming off the frame, 
so that uh, it, it, that's how it'll hit get down to its uh, final elevation. So what I did is I just cut cut a 20 degree cut on the end there, and uh, we're gonna bird mouth it so it goes right on the corner. Uh, we're going to uh, hold it up there with some straight edges and everything else, uh, you know, at 20 degrees, and then we'll fi find our final length. Uh, then we'll just make four of them that way, the exact same way, and we'll build the two cross members and hold them up there, and, and uh, that'll be the next scene. And here we have it. They're up there and they're in, and I went ahead and made a transmission mount. Uh, it was getting late, and I, I just kind of forgot about recording stuff. So I made it and stuck it in there, and it, that worked out really well. Uh, it looks kind of cool. And... Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, there, a ton of welding needs to be done, but we still need to make some tubes to go fore and aft uh, in there because there's going to be a lot of load pushing on, pushing and pulling on those uh, those tubes we have there. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, and then we'll, we need to make skid plates still. All right, there we have the tubes going forward and aft, and I, I made a skid plate uh, just out of quarter, or actually that might be 3 16 plate. Uh, I put four holes in the corners just so, so debris and stuff can drain out and fall out of it, uh, and then I put another hole right underneath the drain plug, so in theory, uh, a guy could take that off and the fluid would come out that hole. All right, I have to. I had to take the plate down and, and weld everything uh, that goes underneath it. So I did that and prepped it and welded it, and then I got to grind that flat and we'll put the plate back on and, and uh, weld it on. All right, and here I welded the uh, plate, uh, and it's still hot, and I just kind of started filming. Uh, that that's it welded on there, and that's just kind of how it came out. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. It's not bad for overhead uh, with a MIG. Uh, and there it is. That That's kind of where we're leaving it off uh, until next week. A little bonus today. We got the uh, slip yoke eliminator. So now we can see kind of what they did. Uh, they must have chucked this up in a lathe and uh, turned, it, turned it back. Uh, they kind of put like a 20 degree angle on the fins there. Looks kind of cool. And then they machine it out and put a, put a, uh, a, a seal there. Uh, so really nothing changed too much. They just shortened it up and then, and then they we're able to put the flange on and retain it So they drilled and tapped the end of the uh, Shaft there after they cut it off and that's how they retain their yoke looks like they make that yoke in house so It's, it's kind of cool. I like that uh, You know, so it, it, it's nothing that someone a guy couldn't do. I mean, I guess they would call that a hack and tap uh, But it, it, you know, it, it, it is nice having a guy do it that uh, knows what they're doing and, and has the machines obviously to do it right uh, instead of sitting there back there trying to Drill and you know drilling and tapping those shafts isn't the easiest things in the world. That's the factory shaft that I'm going to send back to him. I got to take our gears off. Um, it, that, that's one out of the one I pulled out of the the our experimental uh, NP208. So anyway, so I'm going to send that back and I'll send him this cover back. You can see how much they shortened it. Uh, we'll send them this cover back. I'll clean it up a little and get everything out that they didn't give us uh, so that we can make sure that uh, we have all that. Um, and then here's the, I don't think I've showed you, the, the, these are the joints we're using. Uh, they're a uh, urethane insert, uh, uh, kind of like a spherical thing. Uh, they're an inch and a quarter. Uh, these are Curry, uh, these brand. Uh, they're three quarter inch uh, ID on uh, for the bolt for mounting it up. Uh, that's the mount we used today. Uh, it's uh, you know just a just a it, pretty inexpensive energy sus energy suspension uh, transmission mount GM four x four pretty common and that's the hydro boost we're going to adapt I think we showed you all that stuff before a big pile of pile of joints. Well, anyway, thanks for watching this week. Uh, next week, we're going to get the axles kind of up under there. We're going to have to cut off all the uh, brackets and everything on, on the uh, axles that are on there now. So that it's just a nice, clean slate for us to uh, work with. Uh, well, we are going to shave that uh, 14 bolt, but we will do that... Uh, we will do that later, uh, later down. We're, we're going to get this thing uh, down and rolling before before we shave it. I think. Uh, anyway, so so yeah. Thanks thanks again for watching, and we we will see you next week for Axel mock up.